We have wonderful news. I'm excited to wrap up this meeting with something that involves everyone here and will help us all move forward in clinical trials. Um, at the end of our core outcome set project, which was a PCORI funded project, we um, decided after training with the parents and talking with Dr. Thurm about um, the outcomes we were talking about, and a common theme was well, you got to be able to measure it, you know, and it, it, you got to be realistic, like that it, it will change, like you can't you can't wish to go back in time, and, and all of her her wisdom. Um, the need to be able to measure it and hearing about other disorders who had trials where the parents were so excited. I never dreamed my child could go to the bathroom on their own and do these functions, the fine motor of it, the control, the independent, and, and yet their drug failed. And we have so many great things happening in research right now, so much promise that we may actually find ourselves in clinical trials. We have one clinical trial. Um, and we have this core outcome set to be able to say, please get on board with this and make sure that the outcomes that you establish in your trial design, check these boxes so that, first of all, it's a, it's a major advantage to the, the person designing the trial to be able to say, I have parent input. I'll tell you all, here's the manuscript from the core outcome set. Here's their process, here's how they did it. I have the input of this community, and that is how I have chosen these eight outcomes. So I think that's fantastic both ways for, for the researcher and for the family to go, they listen to me, they are measuring what I want them to measure because it's meaningful to my child if there were the perfect drug. Um, but also it helps us compare from trial to trial. It would be very difficult if Company one measures certain things, and company two does, and all parents are saying, I'm happy, but I'm not, and I'm not sure. We, we want to compare apples to apples. So there's a lot of advantages in all of us coming together, making this, this outcome set, and, and then agreeing that we will use it together. So in the second project, we didn't want to leave the core outcome set on the shelf, and we didn't want someone to implement it the wrong way and use the wrong tool, and, and we don't want a good drug to fail. So we, have, we are assembling a team, the core team at the bottom, um, some of the folks from the last group. Um, this time, Dr. Thurm is going to be our, our project co-lead, um, but Dr. Stockler is staying on. We're, we, we met every week for two years. We were a passionate group, and we're really excited to, to do this again and really add even more value to this. Um, Dr. Potter will be a research advisor. Dr. Billy Bennett, you might have um, attended an expert panel. He's a G fantastic GI doctor, and he has a little star next to his name, as do I and Celeste Graham, because we highlighted in our PCORI application, we have parents involved in the research. They, they want that. They want this to be a joint effort. And um, also, uh, Emily Reinhart, our registry coordinator, we're all working together to plan, but we are, again, recruiting a parent's cohort like we did last time. So we'll put out a call for applications. We want a new set of about 24 caregivers, a mix as evenly as we can with Gampton CTD. And um, that group is going to go through training on how to engage in research. They're going to meet with us every month. They're going to start exploring the clinically meaningful differences they would enjoy and appreciate for their children within our core outcome set. So not just what expressive communication, not just I want expressive communication, but what are those little nuggets that you would be excited about? Because we want to make sure, I'm skipping all over, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna recruit, recruit and train. We're going to conduct multiple meetings to explore the, what are the measurement tools out there with relevant experts, so someone who specializes in spectroscopy. We want to be able to assess what are these outcomes that we need to say, you need to consider these when you measure spectroscopy as we've requested. Um, 
we're, like I said, going to interview the parents. We're going to identify those meaningful differences, little small things. And then we're going to host expert panel meetings like we did before. And this time, talk about, um, first of all, invite a broader group. So we want to involve industry and policy makers as well as researchers and clinicians and families this, this go around. And we want to discuss um, the outcome measurement tools ability. So, you know, we have candidates, we have the Vineland, we have these different things. We want to compare these tools and what the parents are saying, this is a meaningful difference. And then we want to be able to say, you know, the, the considerations in selecting these tools is that, you know, this tool does not assess at a low enough level for these meaningful differences that the parents would really appreciate. And we want to make note of that. Um, so we, there will be an even broader net cast where we have a caregiver community, somewhat similar to the Delphi last time around, um, just a last touch point with an even broader group of caregivers to ensure that outcome measurement tool patient relevance is considered, and then we'll have a f alignment meeting two years from now at a 2026 uh, symposium. And we will end it with uh, considerations for CTD and GAMPT outcome measurement tools, and that, that is our goal. Um, so again, the idea of a core outcome set is please check these boxes, and then this is and keep these things in mind when you select the tool that you use to check these boxes so that, again, you don't go off course, it stays patient-centered, and we can, we can help a good drug to um, succeed. So we were hurrying very quickly to save some time so everyone can get ready for the gala, and I just kind of blew through that a little too quickly. Um, so I wanted to point out we are going to recruit a new parents cohort. Um, all of this begins in September, and we are going to be recruiting subject matter experts and the broader caregiver community with that, that big survey. So I will end with an invitation to partner and a bit of a challenge. Um, we really want you to, to acknowledge that you use the core outcome set when you design your trial. And I think that's a great way to communicate back to the patients to reassure them that what you are proposing are good, good outcomes to include in your trial are the things that they have asked you to, to make sure you, you measure. And then um, partner with us in this process. We will have some um, meetings, a discovery meeting and a refinement meeting, and then our consensus meeting at the end. And, and we, we want all of these different stakeholders to be a part of it, including industry and research and families. So keep your ears peeled for all of these announcements in the fall. And um, that is it for my talk. If there's any questions, I'll take those, and then we'll dismiss, and everyone will have a little extra time to get ready. <laughs> Judy, we're going to make you run up next time. <laughs> um, I don't think I have a question, but I just have a comment. So we, when in writing the final manuscript for the Vigilant um, observational study, we were able to, we've put in a reference to the website that you have on because it's such a nice um, summary on your website. And so even, so I know you're in the midst of trying to get it published, but if people are writing something and they want to cite something before your publication comes out, the website is really beautiful and um, really does a nice summary, so. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Any questions for Heidi? So I can run across one more time. <laughs> Someone over here, maybe. 
Um, okay, well, I think we're gonna we're gonna dismiss everyone to go and get ready for the gala. And I, I apologize that we didn't have something extremely informative on the website about attire. We accept everyone in all attire, and there will be some really dressy people, and no doubt there will be some children that only want to wear pajamas. Some of mine are probably on that list. So feel comfortable however you want to come and just have a great time. At 6 o'clock, the bar will open, and it will be out in this hallway, and we'll just be enjoying some drinks and taking pictures on the um, the same backdrop as yesterday, but it's all fancied up. And please tag us, show everybody what a great time they're missing out on tonight. And um, and then the actual gala will begin. We'll open up the doors at 6.30. And then we have a really wonderful program. So if you're feeling tired from a long day, don't give up because our kids are going to knock your socks off. So thank you very much. And don't forget, we added a breakfast tomorrow morning, 7 to 9. And true confession, we're getting a smaller room. And I don't know where it is, but it'll be in this hallway. And it'll just be a small, casual breakfast so you can grab something on your way to the airport. Thank you, everyone, for coming. <laughs>